at the end of the day, sometimes maintaining our well-being can seem like a mountain climb during difficult times. And, you know, the moment that we're in right now, COVID, you know, isolation, not being able to see our families, you know, people have lost their jobs, they've lost loved ones. There's been so many different factors that have had an impact on our well-being. And our resilience has had to upgrade. We've had to manage differently. We've had to, you know, be able to find different ways to manage and cope um, with the stresses that, that is, you know, impacting on us in this time. And so it's really important that we do take time out to just think, out, think about and focus on our well-being, on our mental and our physical well-being. And I think the key thing that I do want people to remember is that it's something that is done step by step. We don't get there straight away. And in different periods in our life, it will be difficult to maintain that well-being. And we have to do the best that we can do in that moment where we're at. And for me, it's about taking it a day at a time. And, you know, if we focus on living in the moment, taking it a day at a time, just for today, then life is much more easier for us to manage. There was a poem that was written once and it was called Just For Today. And the theme of it was basically saying, when we hold on to the past that has already gone and cannot be changed, and when we are dwelling on the future that we don't know whether that's actually going to happen, that is when life becomes unmanageable. But when we focus on today, you see today is a gift, which is why we call it present. And if we focus on today and do what we need to do for today, life becomes just that bit more manageable. And so what's been interesting in terms of the research, it has really shown that, you know, nature is essential to our psychological and our emotional health. The Mental Health Foundation has showed from their research that, you know, the, the um, mental health impacts of the pandemic have showed that going for walks outside has been one of the top coping strategies and 45% of individuals reported being in green spaces has had a vital benefit to their mental health. Why the studies have also shown that during the lockdowns, people are not only, um, you know, going into nature more, but they're noticing it more and it's having profound effects on people's mental health. And so one way of us to be able to bounce back from the pressures and the stresses that we are facing in this time is getting outside more, is connecting with nature. And so it's as if people are rediscovering the most fragile part of our fundamental human need, and that is to be connected with nature, you know? And so it's really important as much as you can, you know, do get out, go for those walks, you know, sit out in the sun when it's nice, go to the park, go for a ride, whatever those things that you can do, the small things that you can do to ensure your own well-being is vitally important. So I want us to look at the well-being continuum model that I designed because well-being is fluid and it changes over time based on our experiences and our coping mechanisms. And so it's really important that we understand, and for you, where do you sit on this continuum at the moment? Where, where, where is it for you that you feel um, that you are placed? And so we have, when we look at it vertically, we have where there's no mental, emotional, or physical problems. And then we go up to the top, of the scale where there is a maximum amount, where it's overload, where it's kind of too much to handle. Then we have, when we look across horizontally, we have where there's no to little um, mental issues or concerns. And then over to the left-hand side is where it's severe uh, well-being issues or concerns. And so it's really important that we are aware where we're at right now, because we all tend to move from this. It's fluid, it's always changing, vertically and horizontally, depending on the events that we are experiencing 
and the coping strategies that we have to manage them. And so <clears throat> when we look at the bottom right-hand quadrant, because there's four different quadrants for this, this is a person who has little to no mental, emotional, or physical uh, well-being or fitness concerns, but is still experiencing a poor level of well-being. Okay, and this could be anything from limiting beliefs, rumination, so how they are thinking on things of the past or worrying about the things of the future that's not actually happened yet. It could be the mind traps that someone's operating out of, all or nothing syndrome. You know, it could be just stress, stresses that's, that's, that's impacted on someone. Worry, anxiety, things like weight gain, you know, tiredness, lack of sleep. So these are things where the individual, you know, can not necessarily be experiencing um, a real amount of problems, but yet still their mental health is being affected or their physical health is being affected in some way. And then we have the person in the top right-hand quadrant who is a person who has little to no mental, emotional, or physical needs and has a positive level of well-being. Yeah, so that person who they may have a stress happen at work, but they manage it, they cope with it, and they keep it moving. It's not having a long-term impact on them. Then we have the individual on the bottom left-hand quadrant. And this is a person with severe mental, emotional, or physical well-being issues who is struggling to cope with experiencing um, a poor level of well-being. And this could be anything from diagnosis, um, suffering with PTSD, you know, um, diagnosed with anxiety or depression, panic disorder, phobias, you know, trauma, or loss, whether that be a physical loss in terms of loss of limbs, whether it be loss in terms of divorce, whether it be loss of a loved one. So this could be where, you know, there's been a severe incident that's happened and it's really impacted on someone's well-being. And then in the final top left-hand quadrant is that individual who has experienced severe well-being issues or concerns, but has been able to develop a coping mechanism, having support in place, and they're able to manage that, whether that's counseling, whether that's therapy, whether that's, you know, um, using whatever kind of mechanisms that works for that individual to be able to manage and get through and still maintain a good level of um, mental, emotional, and physical well-being. So I'm just touching on the model today. Normally, if we was doing a, a long training, I would go through and get us to do exercises around this. But it's just for you to start to think about where it is you fit in that quadrant based on what's going on for you. And the key thing about it is wherever you are at, it's really important that you do have a well-being toolkit, your own box of resources that you know that you can tap into whether that be internal or external it should be a combination of both so it could be deep breathing exercises it could be mindfulness it could be yoga it could be a friend that you can talk to it could be a coach it could be a mentor it could be a counselor you know it could be a colleague it could be your manager but it's important that you are aware of your own well-being toolkit just like a plumber, when they go out to their job, they need to know all the different resources that they have and their tools. Well, for you to navigate through life, you need to have your well-being toolkit that you know that you can pull from when the need comes from it. 